So, is everybody ready to vote? <laughs> you ready to vote? Ready to make America great again? <laughs> so, I had this reoccurring dream, right? And in this reoccurring dream, uh, I'm in the Everglades in the swamps, in this really browny orange water. And I'm on like a canoe, but it's almost more like a leaf. Like, it's not a solid canoe. And at some point, I start to kind of sink into the water. And then there's like this alligator that I, I never see it, but I know it's there. And I kind of had this moment where I just kind of drift into okay. Like, I close my eyes and I just see nothing but the clay color, dirty orange water. And, uh,. And, and you just kind of see all that stuff, right? And it's dirty, it's dark, it's... And, but I just have this sense of peace that comes over me. And like, I'm just waiting for the alligator to swallow me whole. And I never get bitten. I wake up. But it's almost... And I kind of have that analogy to um, what it may be like to go to die, like a peaceful death, relatively. And uh, I never get to the, the horrible part where I get chewed up by the alligator, but I just get like this dirty orange water and you just kind of drift peacefully into, I, I, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. That's what I keep telling myself. It's gonna be okay. I don't know who's gonna win tomorrow. Uh, I'm not a big fan of either choice. I'm voting for Hillary. I know about you about to leave right now. But it's going to be okay. We're, gonna, we're all going to survive this. We're all, we're all going to make America great still. America is great. Uh, I know it's not as good as it always was for some people. But America is a great place to be. And I am hopeful that we're going to survive whatever happens tomorrow. No matter how crazy. I don't know if I'm going to sleep tonight or not. I, I sleep at this point is a, uh, I didn't sleep at all last night. I actually uh, got really sick today and took a nap. So right now I'm actually pretty much awake. So that probably means I'm not going to sleep tonight. Um, but uh, I'm ready to go out and vote tomorrow. And uh, I, I hope everybody here goes out and votes. I don't care who you're voting for in the sense that I just want everybody to go out and vote. Everybody. You want, you want to really solve the problem? D Donald Trump's not the answer. Uh, the way to really solve this problem is get everybody out to vote so that we don't have the radical fringe minorities. Uh, and I don't mean minority uh, by color, race, creed. I'm talking about the fringe elements, the nut jobs, the alt-right, the far left uh, eco-terrorists, right? On both sides, on both sides. All the people that have hijacked both parties, the GOP hijacked by the radical crazy on the right, the DNC hijacked by the radical crazy on the left, and all of us in the middle, they're just like, <laughs> and I've been calling this series angry in the middle. I'm not angry anymore. I am past anger. I'm now at like this numb stage, you know, like when it's getting cold, you know, I don't feel cold anymore. I don't feel anything. Uh, and, and I'm not on drugs, but it's almost like a, uh, a drug induced state of just like, uh, okay, I'm okay. I'm just kind of floating and just kind of going to accept whatever happens. Um, I'm going to vote. But beyond that, there's only so much I have the power to do. Um, I'm, I'm doing these little podcasts. So I think I'm doing my part to kind of say, get out and vote. I hope you vote for Hillary. But if you don't, please still vote. Uh, vote your conscience. Ted Cruz is right. Vote your conscience. Uh, which means don't vote for Trump. And uh, no matter what Ted Cruz is saying now, uh, you know. Uh, the email thing, the controversy is over. So um, the elites are not spirit cookers. They're not devil worshipers. So all you nut jobs on the right, uh, that's not true. Um, all, geo all Republicans are not racist. So all you nut jobs on the left, it's not true. All these horrible things that people have said about the left or the right or the poor or the elitist or the blacks or the gays or the Jews or the uh, women, all women, you know, just grab their whatever. Uh, or the bleeding from there, wherever. 90% of everything you've heard in the last 16 months is not true. 90%. And 90% of most things you hear, even if they're not, tr they may be true, but they're of no consequence to you. You know the 90-10 rule, right? You got to listen to everything because 90% of everything you hear is bullshit. 
But if you don't listen to that 90%, the 10% that will save your life will get missed. You're gonna miss the 10% that'll save your life if you tune out the other 90. You never, you never know what's gonna be important. However, the entire time, you have to have your own personal filters on. Because if you're watching Fox News all the time, there's a lot of bullshit and a lot of lies and a lot of slant. Same thing on MSNBC, same thing on CNN, same thing on, uh, you know, if it's Alex Jones, it's probably 99% bullshit, maybe 1% of it's actually truth. Rush Limbaugh, maybe 95% bullshit. Um, but, you know, the best news organization is right 10% of the time. The, the crappy ones, maybe one or two. Your friends that think they know, that you trust, that they think they know, maybe 10% of the time. Maybe. Maybe 10% of the time. You know why? Because there's so much bullshit. There's so much regurgitated bullshit. They hear, you know, an idiot like Alex Jones, or even worse, they just forward that email that comes to their box. They don't even know who it came from. Oh, look this. This, this claims that Clinton did this, this, and this. I better forward that to everybody I know. You ever get one of those emails? I get them all the time from friends and family. And I'm like, uh, yeah. I get just as many emails from Hillary's pundits. I'm like, uh, yeah. Um, on the, well, the worst side, Hillary is just like the worst spammer ever. And, uh, you know, once you get into moveon.org, you gave them a couple bucks and all of a sudden. I got texts from them. You, you got texts? Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden you get texts and emails like every like few minutes. I'm like, dude, you're not getting another penny. This is why I'm not a Democrat. If you can't figure out how to fix this shit on all the money that you've got to work with, you need to fucking learn how to trim your spending. You need to learn how to budget. You need to learn how to like focus how you spend your money. Like every business and every family in this world. This is why I'm not a Democrat because they do have that problem. They don't know how to respect money. That's like, just give us all the money in the world and we're just gonna give it away to friends, to people who need it. There are people that get money that need it, you know, but the problem is because there's so much abuse, the people on the right are like, oh, we got to cut off all support to the people that can't feed themselves because that guy is abusing it. So you need to get cut back on the abuse. You need to cut back on the scandals. You need to cut back on all the horrible stuff. But I'm giving you one more shot, Mrs. Clinton. I don't know if the rest of the country is going along with me or not, but I'm giving you one more shot. I believe that once you're in there, you're not as corrupt as your husband is. And with you at the, you know, holding the purse string, so to speak, not, I'm not saying anything sexist there. Um, I think it's going to be better off than we were with Bill in that same position. Um, Bill is going to turn the, uh, the West Wing, I think, or, you know, the East Wing into Party Central. But, you know, there's no kids now. Chelsea's out of the house. You know, once, once you finish using foundation money to pay for the wedding and all that, right? There's, our, there's horrible crap on both sides. There's horrible crap on both sides. So we're going to fix this problem. We're going to make America great still. We're going to vote for Hillary tomorrow. And the second vote for Hillary is in, we're going to say we're not, it's not a blank check. It's not a blank check. That's true. Uh, we need checks and balances. This government is set up. But we need checks and balances that work together to make shit happen. Not the power stamp of no, no, no. I really want to go down and teach an improv workshop to Congress. Yes and. The power of yes and. Don't say no. Say yes and. Say yes, I understand you want to get that done. but I, I And I have these concerns. How can we make this work? We need to make D.C. work again. We need to make D.C. great again. America is just fine. And even all the people out there that are just angry and they keep saying stupid shit because they're so god darn angry and scared, um, you, we need to start giving them the, insur the assurances um, that it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You got to stop listening to the people that are in your ear saying, the world is going to end. It's not. The only reason it would end is if enough people listen to those shit folks. If enough people out there listening to the end is nigh hysteria, we're living in the end times, the end is nigh, any minute, Independence Day is going to happen. We need to take personal responsibility, every single one of us. As a society, we need to take care of those that no matter what they do, they need help. Mental health. 
and they have a family and all of a sudden they lost their income, we, we need to not let those people starve. We need to not let those people be on the streets. At the same time, personal responsibility, the flip side of personal responsibility, we don't need a lot of the shit that we think we need. We need food, we need a roof, we need clothes, we need a warm jacket on a cold day. We don't need the newest cell phone or the coolest iPad or the most expensive sneakers or shoes, right? There are a lot of people out there that they can't pay the rent because it went to iPad, iPhone, $400 shoes. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people that can't pay the rent out there because they literally can't get a job that pays more than minimum wage. For whatever reason, whatever reason got them to that place, we don't need to play the blame game. If the best job they can get is a minimum wage job and they've got two kids in a house, they need help. They're out of college and no matter what they do, now, they're out of college and their parents' basement playing video games. Fuck you. Sorry. You're, you're not making an effort. I really don't give a shit about you. Especially good-looking white men that are just being lazy. I have no sympathy for you. And not to make it a white or black thing, but I, I, I know people like this, that uh, you have the brains and the capacity to go out and get a good job. You're just fucking lazy. But that's not the case for a lot of these people. These people are working 60, 70, 80 hours a day. They're picking up your trash. They're maybe even at the fire department. They're working, you know, at McDonald's. They're working in Walmart. They're working these jobs that nobody else wants. And in some cases, they're lucky enough to have a strong enough union that they have benefits and they have a decent amount of pay, you know, enough to get by. But I would argue, like, one of the reasons the, the middle class is suffering is the middle class, and for many, are playing that keeping up with the Joneses game way too much. You are not satisfied with the fact that you have a great spouse and great kids and a house. You want more. I need more. I want more. I want more. I want more. And so we're out there working our asses off, not enjoying it. And the next thing you know, you're, you're retiring and nobody gives a shit about you because you spent your entire life working your ass off or complaining that you didn't have enough. You know, don't be a Willie Loman. I was teaching a kid or coaching a kid for an audition, 14-year-old kid doing Biff's monologue from Death of a Salesman, where Biff is telling his dad... Um, we're, we're basically average. But because you weren't happy with average, you never gave mom. You had, you had a mistress, right? You had a, a second girl on the side in Boston because you, you weren't content. Like, you had a, a wife that's here, def here defending every stupid shit thing you do. And yet you go off and screw another girl, right? You have kids that you say you love, and yet you don't go to their games, right? Um, and this, you know, this is like ABC after school special time. But people don't watch those movies anymore and say, oh yeah, I really should spend more time with my kids. Instead, no, they watch reality TV and says, oh my God, I want to party like the Jersey Girls all the time. Shots, shots, shots. Waste all my money on alcohol and go into the clubs. Instead of building something real. We need more people to be less shallow. We need less assholes and morons. Asshole is an accidental, is an intentional moron. A moron is an accidental asshole. We need more people that aren't just out for themselves. And somehow those people, most of them are assholes and morons, thought that Donald Trump was going to fix the problem. No, that can only happen one person at a time, taking individual responsibility. When you're driving down the street, when you're walking down the sidewalk, when you're going in and out of a building, in and out of a store, and holding the door for somebody before or after you. 
especially getting on and off the fucking New Jersey ferry. I'm, I'm, I'm digressing here, right? Um, I do say when I get off the Jersey ferry and I hold the door for somebody coming inside, they are pleasantly surprised that I did that. People are now more pleasantly surprised when I act just what I would consider basic niceness, niceness, right? Just doing the basic nice thing, holding the door. Not chivalrous, not because it's a woman or whatever, right? No, whoever's behind you, you hold the door. Somebody sneezes, you say bless you, right? When you're about to run into somebody or you bump into somebody by accident, you say, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. And when they do say, excuse me, sorry, you don't say, oh, oh. People bump into people. People make mistakes. Two things. We need to stop fearing mistakes and start being so scared shitless of everything, of being judged, of bumping into somebody. Who, who cares if you bump into somebody? And I tell you, most of the time when I bump into somebody, it's because they weren't paying attention because I am hyper aware of my surroundings. As an actor, martial arts training, blah, 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 blah. And I see it. I'm hyper aware of what's going on out there. More, and that's why I get angry in the middle, right? I, I don't know how to have, I don't know how to be ignorant anymore. I'm too aware. Uh, my acting training, I'm tra and I teach kids to do the same. You go out there and observe the world. Open your eyes. Take off the blinders. Watch where you're going. And if you bump into somebody, who cares? but still say, oh, oops, I'm sorry, with a smile. You know what? how much better your life is with, by doing those simple things? But you know how much more enjoyable life is? Even when everybody else is being shitty, by simply saying, you know what? I'm going to be somebody who does that. It's not about making everybody else's day better. I feel better about myself when I'm the one who says, Oh, excuse me. Oh, let me open. Yeah, let me get that for you. Let me help you out. And maybe that's kind of like its own selfish reward, right? Um, but there are a lot other way, a lot worse ways to be selfish and proud than to be generous and helpful to others. And it doesn't always pay off. I don't do it looking for reward. But you know what happens over time? People start to see you as somebody who is generous. I've had a few times in the last 14 years where I've had run-ins with some scary dudes and gals in some case. Uh, even an outright grifter. Somebody went out there because I didn't let them get away with bullshit and they were actually th thieves. Uh, this guy was a, a, th a thief. He was stealing from people left and right. He was coming in to say, oh, I'm going to be a producer. I'm going to help you out. And then taking people's money. Well, I got into bed with this guy not knowing who he was. And then six months later, we found out exactly who he was. And thank God he was nut job crazy. You know, if he didn't have like anger management issues, I never would have found out that he was stealing, pocketing cash at the door for shows and other things and not paying people and checks bouncing because he wasn't making deposits. And then he went to the entire comedy community and said, hey, don't work with Walt Frazier. He's this, 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 and this. And you know what all those people did? They called me and said, what's going on? Because we know you. We don't know who this creep is. Uh, what the hell's going on? I said, oh, thanks for telling me. They all came to me and told me what is going on because they know I do nothing but try to get people work. I do nothing but try to get people opportunities in this business. I do nothing but try to say, please don't pick up a tray and wait tables. Let's, let, what can we do to get you on TV, to get you a commercial, to get you doing more comedy, to get you more doing acting and getting paid to do it? What, what, can, I, what can we do? Because it depresses me when I see waiters go pick up a tray. I haven't done it in over 10 years. It's, and I, and I, as I'm not bragging about it. I'm very proud of it. But um, I'm more about... You're in your 20s still. When I was your age, I picked up a tray and I didn't put it down until I was 35. 
you're at an age where if you live a little more simply, a little more humbly, you can get by on a lot less and do what I did at 35, at 25. It's a lot more fun to be a bohemian at 25 than at 35, right? And it, this isn't, you know, a seminar on how to make it as an actor and how to live on, you know, $10 a day kind of stuff, right? But I think if we all changed our priorities, if we all changed our priorities, at the same time, we can't just let things happen the way they've been happening. The gap, you know, we still need to protest the so-called 1%. We still need regulation on Wall Street. We still need regulation on the assholes from, Wall, from Wells Fargo. The Wells Fargo execs need to go to jail. When people abuse power and put 5,000 people out of work while pocketing $200 million and stealing all that money, these fucking commercials for Wells Fargo, oh, we're doing our best to pay you back, sorry. Everybody needs to take all your money out of Wells Fargo. If everybody that has their money in Wells Fargo, took it out and put another bank, they would go out of business. Individually, you have no power. But if everybody does it, that's a lot of power. If you all did it, those people are done. The problem is if we do it once at a time, they see the trend, then they sell off their stocks and they sell it. You know, they got million dollar houses they could sell out. They have investments, they got it offshore. They got they already got $200 million in the last year just from stocks going up 200%, right? Because they were able to get the stock price up because they had all these false numbers. We need to regulate Wall Street. We need to regulate things just enough. We don't need to overregulate. We don't need to regulate to the point where we have to drive prices up because we're overregulating. You know, I think that's part of the problem with the Democratic Party. They want to overregulate. They want to overcompensate for assholes and morons. There are morons out there, so we need to like like childproof the entire world for 40-year-old children. We need to childproof the world against the assholes. We need to childproof the world for the morons. No, you know, there, there always will be assholes and morons. On the flip side of thing, on the alt-right side of things, uh, there are assholes and morons of every race and creed. So we need to stop saying we need to curtail things because one guy did something to you or you heard one guy said, you know, most of it, it's all based on fear. It's not even based on, I mean, I, I'm just so sick and tired of hearing bullshit on both sides. But again, the bullshit on the left, as much as we can't afford to do the things they want to do, we can't afford the overregulations. We can't afford to put everybody in college for free. Wouldn't it be easier just to make schools better at the K-12 level and actually teach them something? not just give them liberal arts education. Like we can teach them skills. I've got 13 and 14 year old kids that I'm working with on a one-on-one -on -one basis and teaching them skills as an actor and they're getting work. I have one student that's getting more work than I am right now. It's, uh, I'm very proud, but, uh, but there are great kids out there and we could reach them. We could do a better job at reaching them. We, I don't know what we have to do, because I know I'm able to do it in about an hour a day and give these kids skills to like send them out in the world. I don't know, I don't know what we have to do. I'm not, I'm not an educator. Um, I don't respect a lot of people in education because I think it's too political. You know, I, I think that's why I, I've be, stayed on the re Republican side. I think there's too much bureaucracy I'm not a right-wing nut. I'm voting straight Democrat tomorrow. But we. this is my last pre-election podcast. I'm going to sign off in a couple seconds. So let's finish this with everybody vote. And everybody on Twitter, go right now, say, I am going to vote. Who wants to come with me? Who needs a lift? Who needs, who wants to share a bus ride? Who wants to go down to the polling places with me? To vote. Not to intimidate, to vote, to exercise your right as an American. 
and your responsibility as an American. And for every asshole that sits at home on the couch, fuck you. If you don't go and vote tomorrow, you're 18 and over, fuck you. I don't want to hear you complain ever fucking again. If you vote, you don't get the you don't you don't, you don't get what you want. I want to hear you. Uh, you need to get we all we need, more of us need to complain, but in this in in the fruitful way. More of us need to come together and say, let's fix the problems. What you know, we need less of. We need less. Oh, I can't. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this. I don't have that. No, we all need to come together. And that's the only way this is going to get better. It will get better. Hey, guys, have a great night. Go out and vote. We'll see you soon. Angry in the middle.